I think we're lost. I gotta get tough for all of us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic Heroes Team Rose with me, the Doctor. Two observations um, from that kind of opening cutscene. Number one, Big has really, really creepy eyes. Like, genuinely, that moment where the camera spawns in, like, the camera comes in and it's just facing straight at Big, he's like staring straight into the camera and he's got the cold, dead eyes of a killer. So, hand castle. Thing here is these buttons, touch them, and the entire castle inverts! Fun, isn't it? Uh, and it is kind of cool. But yes, um, the other thing, Big goes, hmm, I gotta get tough for all of us. And he hitches up his belt. That in itself, in itself is not a particularly strange gesture, except for the fact that he's wearing a belt. He's not wearing anything else. Not only is that belt not holding anything up, he is naked. Actually, no, he's wearing sandals. He's wearing a belt and sandals. That is that is a powerful, powerful look. Um, and yeah, I didn't kind of realize that in that moment when he hitches his belt up. I'm like, wait, there's no any point of hitching up your belt if your belt's not even holding anything up. Oh, God, the, the inaccuracies in this game, I swear. Never mind a, a rabbit and a cat and a, a hedgehog going on an adventure to save a frog and a whatever the hell Chocola Chow is supposed to be. I mean, we've not even really seen it beyond that first cutscene, so... But yes, I, I'm, I'm overlooking talking about Hang Castle, which is a kind of fun level, um, because it has these inverted sections where the castle turns upside down and you continue doing shit until the castle turns back up, upside down again. You'll see. Well, right side up. So once again, we go up and down here, and they're, they're quite well designed. Up here, we are now on the underside of the platform we just kind of ran down. We're going, well, down it again, because we're on the un we were on the right side up going down, now we're on the other side going down. And it's a nice little thing like that, and so we're now we're essentially reversing what we just did, but underneath it, so we're also in the same way making progress. Do you follow me? Because I'm not even convinced that I do. Oh, there we go. Um, it's a nice little thing. Even the signs that say speed there, uh, that like tell you what formation to go in, they are also upside down, which is just a nice little, nice little touch. Um, oh my goodness, that was it. Oh my dear lord, this game is a joke. Uh, quite frankly. Well, two minutes twenty in and we're already approximately a third of the way through the episode. Unless I die here, which I may well, because I jumped into the abyss without planning anything. No, we're fine. The platform moved underneath me. Good lord. Uh, well. I would be surprised if any of these episodes make it to 20 minutes. The forest zone may have done, but it's, it's gonna be a dicey thing. This one, well, it may, who knows? Mystic Mansion may be huge. Anyway, it's first before that time for Toilet Town, and it's just the um, non-emerald one, so I will speed through it as ever. Super, super happy! <laughs> Well, shit. As you can see, there's a rail above us we're supposed to have grabbed and I failed to do so, so I'm going a long time without boosting my links up. Oh, and I missed the bloody spring there as well. It's not been a good run for me, has it? This is not an emerald challenge. Oh my god! Well, I got to the end anyway. <laughs> that was that was rough. I missed like everything it was trying to give me, and yet I still did it. I'm. I want to say those aren't easier for Team Rose, but they might be. It would be stupid if they were, because like at least the Emerald ones affect all four of the saves. So why would you bother getting them on any other one? We can just get them on Team Roses if they're actually easier. Then, either way, onto Mystic Mansion. Myst my yeah, Mystic Mansion, and some of the best music in the game. Okay. Don't worry, I'll be right by you. I say that a lot of the music in the game is almost the best music in the game, though, because this game does have really good music. But this one is really cool, and it evolves depending on what area of the game you're in. There's probably about, I think there's five or six major phrases to it, and each phrase loops, kind of depending on what part of the castle you're currently in. This is very kind of non-linear, this one. 
So there's this door in the middle that doesn't seem to go anywhere. But over here is a switch. Okay, over here isn't a switch. Interesting. Have I just been bamboozled again? No, the switch is here. And it makes some enemies appear, but you'll notice a corridor has also appeared behind the stairway. And now we move to the second phrase of it, um, which sounds oddly like Team Chaotix's fit, uh, theme uh, that we heard. Actually, I didn't really talk about that when we fought Team Chaotix in Frog Forest. In that Frog Forest fight, when you fight another team, you hear their theme tune being played. And we heard kind of Team Chaotix, which is quite catchy, you know, the Team Chaotix, the detectives you want on your side. Team Chaotix, the directives tracking down your crimes. Fun fact, that's how I learned what a directive was. Never knew before then, and I looked it up when I first played this game because I was confused. Um, I don't know what I thought it was, but I definitely thought it was something that wasn't directives. See, we're invincible here, so we can just beat the shit out of this guy. And there we go. And now we're into the cool part of the music, the where it gets seriously funky. Anyway, here up ahead is oh, there's a key down there. Didn't even see that. Thanks for the camera. To, thanks to the camera for going gammy there and pointing that out to me. Here we get onto a trolley, which is rather like the kind of speed thing we rode in the first episode that I didn't really talk about, except it's on a fixed track. We can hold, if I hold back, no, X. As you can see, we break and slow down. If I let go of X and hold forwards, we speed up again. Um, you can jump with A. Well, Big the Cat explained it infinitely better than I certainly ever could. Um, jump, brakes, all that stuff. If we come up to the left side... Nope. If we come up to... Uh, well, I said it was the left side, I just went right when I said left side. If we hop up to the middle here, there's also another key there, but we actually don't need that because I've already got a key at the moment. And I believe we're pretty much at the end of it here. Yeah, I can hear the end of the level. Um, so the switch is here, and every time you switch, it makes... Skeleton! Hold stuff in a different position. Apparently we want the left hand one. There we go. That was 2 minutes 50 as well. Oh my god, even with Toilet Town, which I sped through largely, this is still going to be like a 10 minute episode. This is embarrassing now, really. Um, I feel bad for this. I feel like I'm just delaying content, which I kind of am. I mean, in fairness, this is deliberately going up to defer time while I can practice, um, while I can get, get everything ready for my next Let's Play, which I will be announcing next episode. I mean, it should be already fairly obvious for anyone who's been following stuff with the channel, but still. Time for Toilet Town once again, and this time we are chasing after the Chaos Amethyst, I believe is purple. Um, worth noting, I don't think they actually have canonical names, I think they all are just Chaos Emeralds of different colour. But I don't like the idea of calling Emeralds different colour, though I believe Emeralds can be different colours. Correct me on that if I'm wrong, because I know things like, I know Sapphires don't have to be blue, Rubies Sapphires are a type of ruby or something like that? I know that gemstone names aren't necessarily, like, colour and name aren't intrinsically linked. Like, a lot of sapphires do just happen to be blue, but aren't necessarily. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same for emerald. Because uh, I know emerald is, is I think it's beryl. Um, it's, it's the same thing as an emerald. It's beryllium that it's based on. But I don't know if it's anything like that, because I know a ruby is aluminium oxide. Um... And it has different levels of chromium impurities, which are what cause it to take on different colours. The most common impurities make it blue, hence the kind of public association with sapphires as blue, but that's not necessarily the case. Rubies, or is it rubies that are aluminium oxide? I'm not actually sure entirely. But the point is, I don't know if emeralds can be colours other than green, please correct me if I'm wrong. You will also notice for once I'm talking through Toilet Town rather than just speeding through it. Uh, we're actually going to lose this one, I suspect. <laughs> Fuck! I was so close to it. Yeah, I, I hit, uh, fucked up and hit bomb so much, but I kept talking through it because... So, now we're onto Robot Storm. It's like Robot Carnival, but slightly larger. We have to fight Eggman's robots again and again. No, yeah, um, 
I was, yeah, I was, I was talking through that one as I was speeding through it, just because this is otherwise, otherwise this is gonna be an embarrassingly short episode, unless I seriously fuck up Robot Storm, which I'm hoping to not. But I mean, well, never say never. But otherwise, we're gonna be like a six-minute episode. Because what I did, Mystic Mansion and Han uh, Hank Castle in like two minutes fifty each, so we're probably on about seven minutes at the moment. So it'd be nice to at least get this into double figures of minutes. I mean, these are the things we really have to wish for. Um, oh my goodness, things nearly spawned on me there. Oh, there's these dudes carrying bombs, which are potentially a threat, but not really because we're Team Rovers and nothing is a threat to us because we are the most invincible team in all the land. We've got a team. Oh my god, Amy's already level three. I'm going to switch to Amy. So, when you've defeated enough enemies here, you choose when to move on. You hit the switch and it will move you on to the next level. Well, the next section. I reflexively did a team blast there. Uh, but the next section, when you kind of spawn into it there, the enemies don't spawn in. You are, or they are automatically there when you get there. Obviously, levels like this are really easy with Team Rose, who have the bonus of... Oh, this is going to look cool as shit. Hey, get fucked, lads. Um, yeah, the fact that our team blast activates, um, gives us a level up to everyone, makes levels like this extremely easy. This thing, this is hilarious. Free team blast! <laughs> because because clearly we're struggling and we need that. So there's a guy hit. Fuck it, I'm gonna team blast it because why not? At least the team blast is the animation on it is quick. Now that just gave us a ton of points because we can't have another level. <laughs> I'm so glad we get to hear that again. My god, that was easy. Oh, this episode's gonna be like, if this episode is under 10 minutes, I am so sorry, guys. Uh, I'm, it's, I'm terrible because uh, this game's too easy, clearly. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the Spooky Zone. I hope you'll join me next episode for the final episode of Sonic Heroes, which will be the Airship Zone. Thank you very much and good day.